Hi there, it's time for another unboxing. Now, uh, it appears that Daki didn't uh, do it. It's because I had to do it. Daki was on vacation. So let's see what we can do and uh, see what this is. Um, now, it says CN22, that's always great. And also a bunch of information, but what's key is that the worth is $5.50 and there's a signature. So, let's see what this is. This is quite small. This might be a cell phone, it might be, well, you know it's a 22 Puzzle 22, so this must be related to that channel, this channel. So, let's get this open. Oh, there is more. Now, I haven't shown you this yet. Uh, I found this in my Rip, cur uh, rip Curl shorts. As you can see here, it says Rip Curl. It appears to be a bottle opener, a comb, and also has a few... Uh, slightly dull blades here that we could use to open packages. That's quite handy for on the go, and it won't count as a weapon, hopefully, at the border. Only thing this is, this is missing is scissors. There we go. Now, we should be able to get a good handle on, on this and get it opened. Alrighty, so let's see what we have here. Aha, the missing link keychain. Right, let's get this out. And no, no, no padding, which is a bit disappointing. It was kind of shoved into the packaging. And we have what appears to be a, uh, what do you call that? Um, a blister pack with what it, it says here. Go bananas! There's like a, an ape eating a puzzle, which looks like a banana, but what's emerging is actually a puzzle. Ideal, the missing link keychain puzzle. Guaranteed guaranteed to challenge, entertain, perplex, and madden. And from the makers of the Rubik's Cube. That's when you know it's good or it's bad. It depends. Now at the back, there's so much information. If you want to read it on your own, you can just pause the video, or I can just read it now. Now, uh, just a few things to mention. A mix and turn and slide and think of how to find the missing link. That's a nice rhyme. Uh, object, of course, is to mix up the puzzle and restore it to its original state. And the thing, or the quirky thing about this puzzle, is that it does not turn in the center. So read all the instructions before using. Uh, and right there it says the center blocks do not turn, so that's why. Uh, this is so interesting. Also, this is sort of like a uh, puzzle with a gap because you can actually slide tiles around. So this is uh, going to be interesting. Now let's go open this up despite it being, uh, let's see how old this is. Ideal Corporation from Newark, 1982. This is much older than I am yet it hasn't grown a bit. That's a joke. Um, yeah, let's get this open. I noticed there's some scotch tape here, so that might be a hint as to how to open this without damaging the product. Okay, I got the scotch tape off. Okay, just work it loose. Now the one thing I'm worried about is that this might be a knockoff, no matter how old it might be. The reason why is that no matter what, there's always one of these things available on eBay, which is where I got this one put, uh, from. So always be cautious and do your research, not like me, so that you know whether or not you've got the real deal. From ideal. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's put this here and see what we have. Um, first off, I can note that this is quite small. Let's pull out a ruler. No, I don't have a ruler with me. Um, we've got a keychain, a triangle connection there to hold onto the puzzle with a knob. And this bit is glued on. So this knob is part of a plate and it's glued on. And here is the main body of the puzzle. Oh, look. CITC 1982. The, the ideal corporation, something like that. Ideal something. Uh, ideal Toy Corporation, I guess. Oh, 
autofocus doesn't like me. Okay, and also something to note, in, compared to the original missing link, the, the actual pictures on the tiles, or the painting on the tiles, are indeed that. They're paint, not stickers, which is really good. So, first turns and slides. So, we have a tile here that slides pretty all, all right. You can see it catches, but once it starts moving, it will slide nicely. Same with the other tiles. Let's get this out of the way because the autofocus is getting distracted. Okay. There's the green, there's the red, there's the yellow. Okay, we should be able to turn that side, that side, but not the middle. So let's see. Okay. So it does turn and it snaps in place as well. So it's a bit stiff. When you get it started, it's fine. Then it locks again. It's not bad. Not sticking. Uh, on the right side. Yep, same kind of action. Okay, now the middle should not turn. And indeed, it is a lot more resistant to turning. All right. So let's see what uh, we can do. Let's give it a first scramble and I'll jump cut to back after playing with this for a while. Oh, okay. Th these sides turn really well. Okay, feels pretty solid in how I can scramble this thing. Of course, due to the nature of the puzzle, you cannot turn the centers, so it's going to take a while to scramble the center parts of this, but not too long. As already now, I don't know where to start. Now, of course, now it's really obvious it's missing one color, blue, but however, this is, of course, a, a Go Bananas themed puzzle. So the only colors here are red, green, yellow, and white. So. I think that's what they were going for. But let's see uh, an overview about this puzzle. Because uh, there are some details that you might want to know about before picking this up. Um, now the tiles themselves on the outside are really flat. So that's good. They have a kind of texture to them. And it's painted so I doubt it will wear off too, too quickly. Um, however, the edges of the tiles you might notice some of them have some imperfections, so if I... There we go, you can see some imperfections there and there on this red and green tiles. So that might be a part where they, they molded the puzzle and then broke it off from the, the extra bits. So that might be where the flash was, if you know what I mean. Um, also, this sticker might come off because this is just a paper sticker. So if you are a collector, try to look for one that is really, really intact. Or otherwise, uh, make sure it's in this kind of packaging. The other thing I noticed is that when I was looking online for pictures of a missing link keychain puzzle, uh, the packaging is actually much different. It does say uh, these kind of things, but I don't re recall seeing one with bananas or a monkey on it. So this could very well be a knockoff, but this appears to be a very well functioning knockoff. It's not uh, not too bad. All right, let's jump cut and see what uh, I think about it after playing with it for a while. All righty, so it's been a bit, and by bit, I mean five months. It has been uh, that long since I actually unboxed this thing, but to you, it's been only a few seconds, hence the jump cut. I mean, who'd want to watch footage for five months of me just doing stuff unrelated to this puzzle. Anyways, uh, I did learn a little bit about uh, this puzzle. The first thing, the missing link. Um, that actually refers to the last common ancestor between humans and chimpanzees. Humans and chimpanzees, um, which explains the weird mascot holding a banana peel encasing a puzzle. Um, that also makes the color scheme uh, make much more sense as this uh, this red, green, and yellow, and white color scheme reminds me of a tropical rainforest for some reason. Or maybe some country that might be associated with that. 
like Brazil perhaps? I'm not sure. This is just all a shot in the dark. Um, another thing is the ITC. What does that mean? Well, I pulled out my original uh, missing link version and it says here Ideal Toy Corp 1981 right here. So that's what this is short for. And of course, the C with the circle is copyright, I think. The only difference is the date, 1981, 1982. But of course, you have to make the original before you say uh, this one is the mini. Like this is called the, the mini. Or at least the keychain, I think. Yeah. Um, so, what else have I not done with this? Ah, yes. Earlier, I didn't have a ruler, so let's measure it now. The length, if you ignore the little stub at the bottom, is nearly six centimeters long. And I guess both versions of width is exactly the same. So it's about 1.5 centimeters wide, so which is quite tiny. You could hide it in your hand like that, like so. It's very small. And of course it has a keychain, though I never trust keychains with on puzzles. Now, we can also compare the original to the keychain, and it turns out that the keychain is just a little bit less than half the length of the original, if you include this stub. Actually, if you include the stub, it's a little bit longer. It's shorter if you ignore the stub. Also, the width is quite small as well. Um, it's a little bit less than half of the original, so I'm not sure how they kept this to scale, but that's that. Um, also, uh, I mentioned that there was uh, trouble starting to slide these uh, tiles, and I believe it was uh, this section right here where this had trouble. But uh, what happened was uh, sometimes, especially this end where the keychain bit is attached to, uh, it can be a little bit off. If you look at the tracks there, it looks fine, but sometimes it can rest just ever so slightly off, like so. So when you try sliding, the puzzle just catches and gets stuck. But if you don't put too much force on the tile while you're sliding it, it actually slides pretty smoothly. And uh, Yes, it hasn't changed yet, the turning. It is a little bit stiff, but it does lock when it's done turning, so that's a, a plus and a minus canceling each other out. You can kind of hear the, the amount of friction in between turns. And something like that, you can see that it's not quite aligned and it's stopped, so you sort of have to help it um, line up again if it's not uh, going too well. Of course, if you have trouble t uh, moving a tile in a quick solve, you can just wiggle it slightly like that to try to get the tracks to line up. Besides that, I think we should start scrambling and actually solve this thing. Alrighty, it's pretty scrambled. 
and it's even more prevalent now that you can tell it's missing blue but I mean it nicely contrasts with the blue background. Now to dictate the solved state because of course you can swap uh, rows and columns well mostly columns you can swap those uh, we're going to stick with uh, the scheme that this one is in. So first off we're going to try to solve yellow. Uh, now I won't go in full depth on a tutorial for this because uh, there's probably other tor tutorials out here on YouTube but um, I'll show you a little bit of a walkthrough between the last two tiles or the last two rows. Alright first is yellow. So let's see, we're going to have to get, cycle these tiles around to get this to the other side. So we could do that. Shift all three of these across. Do that. Just like so. And coincidentally, we have a middle piece right there so we can bring that up and across like that. Oh, there we go. There are the other pieces. So let's put a gap here, planning ahead, and put this middle piece in the gap and bring that upwards like so. But now we have the gap all the way at the bottom. Okay. Also, well, let's just uh, do this first. Let's bring the gap up here. Okay. And now the middle piece is there. Okay, we're going to have to somehow shift this over all the way to the other side. Like so, and we can bring that up there to match and make the yellow. Next, we're going to work on the green. Let's see, we've got a green end pieces here and tiles. So that was quite easy. Next, we're going to have to bring this tile to the center. And something to note, we cannot bring this green tile all the way up here because that would uh, upset this guy here. So we're going to have to, let's see, do some juggling here. We're going to bring that up here to the side. Then we're going to bring that there. M remove the piece that's in the way. Okay, we do have some misalignments here. Let's see the track. Yeah, you can see how the track is a little bit off. You have to adjust it slightly. And then the tile should move quite smoothly there. So there is a slight misalignment problem. And now we've got a two solved. Now the final thing, the final state in three minutes, can I solve this? Well, the first step, well, is to know what you're going to solve. So we're going to go for this. We're going to have the white on the right and the red on the left. The first step is to cycle all the pieces around and get this piece in its right spot. So I see that piece there. So we can quite easily do that. And that. And that, that piece is down there. Next you want to get the white piece and actually bring it up here. or here on the actual thing we're solving. Now this piece got to stay in place. So you can rotate this, but you don't want to slide it away from its spot. So what we're going to do is get this here. Not too difficult. If we were to keep cycling, we could go like this and then get that tile and then keep looping things around, but that's fine. Uh, next step is to get this guy over here and uh, get a gap over here. So let's see if we can do that. These two pieces should now stay in place. Okay, there's a gap and there's the bottom piece of the white. So now we can cycle um, these around to solve the white, or most of the white. Like so, we've got a bit of the white there. And we've got these two. Next step is to solve the white. Now it is solved in this case, but if it wasn't solved, it might be in uh, some place like here. So if it was in some place like that, 
we just have to scramble these three pieces here in a small cycle, and you could solve it like that. If the white piece was actually here, so let's see if I can cause that case to happen. Okay, if the white piece was here, it would be difficult to actually bring it here because there is no gap to shuffle things around. So you're actually going to have to bring that white piece up like that, cycle a little bit, and move this white piece somewhere else here. Next, when you cycle back and let the rest of the white part go, solved, you now have the white piece in this half over here, and you can manipulate the rest like so. Now we still have a, a scrambled red side, the white side's good, so we're going to do a similar trick. We're going to cycle clockwise again, and let part of the white piece, or white side, end up there. Now this whole half is all, um, all the red part, so we just got to shift things around, cycle them, the three pieces, until the end red piece is up there. Then when you cycle back around to fix the white over here, you also fixed the red. And just like so, it is solved. So overall, this is a neat, fun little puzzle. I wouldn't let it leave the house um, to avoid uh, losing it because this is such a rare piece. Um, you can't buy it in the stores, but you can probably find it on eBay. Okay, this has been, well, let's hold it like this. This has been the Missing Link Keychain Puzzle. Thanks for watching.